right, so we did our uh, Tom Tracer deal here. And um, actually, this was kind of good because <clears throat> it stimulated a, a pretty good discussion, which is uh, always fun. And uh, so I wanted to address some of those comments uh, that kind of came up. <clears throat> a couple guys mentioned, hey, you're not following your template accurately. And um, uh, because of the stylus diameter, Let's, let me grab this here, the stylus diameter of the indicator, right? Well, basically what I'm going to tell you is when the nose radius of the tool and the nose radius of the, of the indicator are similar, um, it does pretty damn good, okay? So uh, now <clears throat> here's our template that we, uh, that we used here. So what I did was I, I had a, a second one that I had printed, but what I did was I instead of cutting it out as a positive, I cut it out as a negative, okay? And, um, um, well, I cut it right on the line, so, uh, and you guys know that these printers are pretty good, so let's, uh, let's stick that up there, see if we can uh, convince these guys that this is a reasonable technique here, okay? So, it fits, I, I call that PFC, and I'll, I'll let you fill in the letters. <laughs> Um, anyway, so it's pretty good. So, uh, but you know, play with it. Uh, I encourage guys to to try this out and uh, experiment with it and uh, expand its possibilities. So, that was uh, that was one thing. So, another thing that kind of came up was uh, um, let's see here. Oh, uh, about the backlash. Uh, that was the other thing. The uh, the backlash in the. Um, uh, the crossfeed screw. Well, it really doesn't make any difference because your indicator is your feedback mechanism and it really doesn't have any backlash. So as long as you're watching the indicator, the indicator doesn't care what you're doing with the uh, um, with the cross slide, okay? And sure, you might have to overcome a little bit of uh, of, uh, of backlash, but it's almost transparent to you because you're watching, you know, your your feedback your feedback is the indicator, right? So as the indicator starts to move, you wind the other way, right? And uh, um, so th that's your feedback mechanism, a zero backlash feedback mechanism. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to kind of point that out. So I, it, 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 the backlash doesn't seem to bother me, so uh, I just put it that way. So let me, uh, I'm gonna change the camera a little bit because we're gonna look at this end here and uh, we'll talk about this, uh, this hole that's uh, through here. All right, so somebody, uh, you know, when I turned this thing around after drilling this hole all the way through, um, and, you know, and then I spun the spindle, they said, geez, look at that hole, it's running out like crazy. Well, I would agree, it's running out a fair amount, okay? But remember, I drilled in, you know, four and a half inches, okay? So um, that's that's kind of a long ways. and. Drills do that, okay? Even a brand new grind on it, okay? There's nothing that, you know, there's all kinds of stuff going on down that hole. The chips are building up. Um, I, I'm varying the pressure as I feed, right? So I crank and then I back out and I crank and I, you know, so there's all kinds of stuff going on. So the drills, drills tend to wander, especially in deep holes, okay? Um, so that's why you don't rely on drilling uh, for real accurate uh, hole positioning, okay? It, you know, fine if it's through a piece of sheet metal. How far off can you be, right? But uh, for deep hole drilling in um, an accurate location, drilling is not your friend, okay? Uh, boring is your friend, and uh, so this this is a non-precision hole, so we're really not going to worry about it. It's just clearance for the screw. We're going to put a little counter bore in here in a few minutes and um, and kind of finish this piece up. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to explain why that hole's running out. It's just, you know, when you drill four and a half inches with a half inch drill, um, you're gonna, you know, it's gonna wander a little bit, okay? It's just the way, it's just the way, of, the way of the world. <laughs> okay, so the next thing was, um, we were, somebody asked about uh, parting feed, okay? So, uh, in fact, this is the side that I parted off here. Um, they said, hey, do you, do you power feed or uh, do you feed by hand? Well, in general, I feed by hand when I'm uh, when I'm parting, and uh, so then the next natural question is, you know, what's the what's the rate uh, that you're feeding at? Well, to me, it's not really 
particularly a rate, it's a, it's a pressure. And, um, and it's, so what I'm looking at, the things in my feedback mechanism is the pressure that I feel on my hand, okay? And you don't want to baby parting tools, you want to push them a little bit, okay? You want to load the tool up, and then you're looking at the, uh, you're looking at the chip forming. If the chip forming is good, you're at the right pressure, okay? So this wide tool, let me pull a different one down here too, this wide tool is going gonna, is gonna to have a different pressure uh, than this tool, okay? So your feedback is you're looking at the chip and you're feeling the pressure, and, and the trick to parting is maintaining that pressure, okay? You want to maintain that pressure as uniformly and smoothly as possible, okay? Now, this is something that's, uh, that's tricky to do with the power feed, right? Um, but uh, it's, it's really what you want. And the other thing is keeping the, uh, the cut wet with some kind of lubricant. Uh, deep, deep parting I use uh, uh, soluble because it gets down in there. And shallow parting like this thing here, I use a brush on uh, oily oil. So um, anyway, I just want to address the uh, that parting uh, uh, parting comment. It was actually a valid, good comment. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to talk about was the um, you know somebody said, hey, <clears throat> you could use the you could use the old the original part as a template. Well, that's absolutely correct. You could um, if you have one. Um, so I don't know about you guys, but uh, I have I happen to have one of these baby bullets, but not everybody does. So the idea behind making your own templates is included in those drawings on my blog is is this template, okay, or a, a full scale section of this. So once you digitize this and convert it into electrons, you can share it all over the world. I can't share this all over the world, um, but if you wanted to duplicate a shape, you certainly could trace the original, okay? So maybe you had a, uh, so here's another one I did a while back, okay? And this is a handle, um, and, uh, you know, but I, but I drew it up. I measured it and I drew it up. That way I, I can scale it, I can change it, I can, I can share it. Um, but um, um, if you had that original handle or you were trying to duplicate that original handle that you already had, you could certainly do that. Now. You know these are these templates here. They they're kind of uh, you know they're universal mounting here. So I made this little rinky dink uh, little template holder, right? So uh, um, you know I can just plop these on there like that, um, or like that, or whatever, whichever way I, I feel like machining that, right? In this case, I think I was going this way. Yeah, I was going this way. So. You know, there may be some direction that you want to machine that, right? Um, um, and in this case, we really want to try to complete that uh, that curve, right? So we're going to start with that part. And then this is a later adaptation here where I've added some lead-in, which actually uh, um, is uh, a cool feature. <laughs> Moving cars around out there. So uh, um, anyway, so that's uh, some comments about... Uh, about following the original. And you know, this is actually fairly smooth, so you could probably track on that pretty well, but mounting that up, you'd have to build a little thing to kind of hold it in there. So uh, um, I just assume kind of uh, do it electronically and then I can share it and then I can mail it to whoever I want. So uh, anyway, that's the comments on the uh, following the original. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna bore this little counter bore in here. Um, this little boring tool here. Um, so what that's for is this little flange here sits in that and that's the um, kind of the push-pull surface of this screw, right? Um, so it sits in that little counter bore and then there's a little plate that goes over the top of that and um, um, when you open the vise it backs up against the plate and when you drive it in it pushes against the uh, this face here. Now. To keep the kind of the backlash low uh, between going forward and going backwards, what we really want to do is make that counter bore just a whisker bigger than what this flange is here. Now, um, one of uh, um, one of the viewers 
made this screw and uh, and so we're, we're just going to double check the uh, the thickness here it's a it's a little bit thin um, it's supposed to be around an eighth of an inch but it really doesn't matter um, it's uh, let's see is that right yeah that's so this doesn't matter that does matter right so it's the thickness of this that matters is the the groove doesn't really matter uh, it's this flange that's uh, the important number so um, anyway we're gonna make we're gonna match that counter bore uh, to this thickness here or a few thousands deeper you know we don't want it to uh, to bind up so uh, um, what I'm seeing you know 106 a little thicker yeah okay 106 so we'll probably make it 110 something like that and um, um, and then fit the diameter nicely so uh, let's uh, let's start by putting the lathe in gear Mr. Wizard <laughs> so there you can see that run out that uh, uh, that one viewer was talking about and like I said it doesn't really matter I'm just going to do a little visual touch off come up and uh, get a nice little pick up there. There we go. And I zero the axis there. Now, I'm probably just going to feed this by hand since it's so shallow. Well, maybe not. It's deep enough that, uh, let's see how fast we're going. Okay. And we'll just power feed it. Get a couple of cuts on this and they can get a diameter. You know, when you have a shallow hole, you gotta <laughs> you gotta be uh, ready to uh, ready to pop it out of gear. Your numbers come up pretty quick. All right, let's get a let's get a uh, a dimension there, at least something, so we know where we are. Just gonna use calipers for this. All right, six twenty-eight. All right, I'll go with that. So. 0.628 enter. Okay. Let's uh, put a whisper of uh, oily oil on it. chips are going right <laughs> down the hole now the last cut all right so the DRO is tracking nicely um, the last cut I'm gonna bore and then come across so I'm gonna give it uh, let me double check this dimension here okay he's right on there 750 I'm probably gonna give it about five five thousandths clearance there um, I don't know, sounds about right to me for a small diameter. 750 right there. Alright, now let's go for the clearance clearance. across 
starts this way now, flatten that bottom. Okay. And that should be it. Let's uh, give it a. You see, there's a mile of clearance on that. All right. Oh yeah, that feels feels fine. All right, now let's do a little check here. Maybe uh, you can kind of see here. Okay, so I'm holding my scale up against, flat up against that surf. Let's, maybe, maybe you guys can see better this way here. I'm holding my scale up flat against that surface there. And then what I want to do is I want to just feel that, that that can turn freely there. And then I'm pushing, pushing and pulling on it, and there's not much wiggle there, okay? All right. Uh, so I'll just break those edges a little bit. Now there's some mill work, but I'm going to wait on the mill work because... Uh, until I weld the uh, the jaw onto that. So the jaw gives us an orientation and I'd rather not have to do accurate welding. It's a lot easier to do accurate hole placement after the welding um, than to do accurate welding uh, with the hole placement first. I hope that makes sense. So, um, so this part will be done until we make the jaw piece. So, all right. Okay, so, uh, um, I don't know, what do we do here? That goes there. Um, this is still distorted from the welding, so we're gonna wait until we to, to um, size that bore when we weld this, after we weld this jaw, because there's a bunch of welding there that's gonna just tweak that bore some more. But, uh, um, that's the idea, it's pretty good actually. Let's see. Sweet. Okay. So, uh, I don't know. Pretty soon we're going to be doing these jaws here. This this will be pretty interesting, the, the, jaw, uh, the jaw work. So, um, there she blows right now. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for following the project. And uh, thanks for all your great comments. This is, uh, this is turning into kind of a... This is a real fun little project, so uh, I'm glad you guys are all enjoying it.